All right, Spinderella, welcome to the show. You know, it's so crazy. In the years that I've had this show for four years now, this is your first time, which is crazy. <laughs> I know. it's. Um, I don't get caught up in any mess. That's why. I'm not normally caught up in any mess. Or at least I try to avoid, um, you know, that that stuff that goes on in these artists' life. But looks like I'm kind of caught up in some things right now. I mean, your name is in the streets. Everybody is asking where it's Spinderella. We're going to get into all that. And I just want people to know, and let me just be very clear. Before there was a Hollywood Unlocked, before there was a Jason Lee, everybody knew. Um, Spinderella was actually one of my first friends when I first moved to LA. I was still working at the Union. And um, I remember I had a 29th, I think it was, was my 29th birthday party. Was it, has it been that long? Oh. Maybe about. 30th birthday. I can't remember. It's been it's been like 13, 14 years. You DJ my party. Yeah. And one thing that I remember is, well, two things. One, I had a great time. And two, you got me so drunk off of those damn drinks. What what were the drinks? Yeah, again? Lemon drops, boo. <laughs> I can't even drink a lemon drop now because of you. I didn't even make it home that night. But yeah, I remember you got me that, that yeah. drink and I got so lit. Yeah, that was our that was our drink of choice back then when we got around each other. Um it was good times though. Yeah. And so you left LA, went to Dallas, and just mm -hmm. never came back. You don't miss us out here? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I miss LA. I miss my friends. Of course, you know, Kalima, my best friend, um, she passed uh, uh, three years ago. Um, I just, I'm, I terribly miss it. I miss hanging out. And um, LA was just like a, it was a great place for me to to grow and to um get the hell away from New York. How about that? <laughs> and so so Dallas, so Texas. I, I recently went to Texas. You came and visited me on my book stop. Uh the men and the energy in Dallas is very different than LA and New York. Like I feel like it's a lot of love out there. And I know that you found love and now are engaged. You just went out there and said, I'm just gonna glow up, get my whole marriage, married life together and is 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 the men is it just different out there dating? Yeah, it's that southern hospitality. You know, the southern man, oh my god, they're just so hospitable and um I mean for what I know. I'm sure there's women that might say differently, but um I found my love. Yeah, I I wasn't looking for it. My fiance, we we're getting married in May. And we were supposed to get married last year, but of course, due to COVID, we had to, you know, postpone the wedding. But um, I'm gearing up for that now. But yeah, the men out here, um, it's sexy. <laughs> I'll say that. So one thing I know about you, and you started by saying that you're typically not in any mess, but for some reason, I feel like you're in the middle of mess that you may not have necessarily created because as you know, the Salt and Pepper documentary is out on Lifetime. And uh, a lot of people are watching it, but I'm sure you have not. You're not in there. You're not mentioned in the press. I know that they recently did an interview where they were questioned about that on The Breakfast Club. And uh, they said that they were not allowed to speak your name. But uh, that came by way of the lawsuits. There's, there's a lot to unpack here. The first, first thing I want to ask you is, have you seen the salt and pepper doc? No, I haven't. I have not seen it. Um, I'm, I stand by my statement. I will not support something that does not support me. Mm -hmm. And I was a part of the brand and I was a part of building the brand and I have every right to not um, support it because of the fact that it didn't support me. And people should um, know that that was a dream of all of ours. And that was discussed. We, we discussed a movie of our life back in the nineties, our dreams were coming true, but it seemed like when those things would come true um, or come to fruition, I would be left out of it, but I helped to build it. So yes, I had, I had, you know, no, I was just, it was for me, it was very disappointing. You met the girls back in what, 19, 1986? Is that when you met them and then joined the group? Okay, 87. so 1987, you meet them. You guys, the three of you become a part of hip hop history. The first was all female hip hop group to reach that level of success right out the gate, right? 
Yes. This, this was, um, I mean, it was for me, um, when I was brought into the group, I was told what my, what my role was, was, and that was, I would be DJing for this, for this group. Um, and Herbie who brought me in his intentions, because I asked him again, um, what was your intentions for me? He said, I wanted, I wanted run DMC and Jam Master J. I wanted Houdini. In my head, he's, he, that's a group. <laughs> so fulfilling those, um, filling those holes in and doing what needed to be done to make that happen, the work that it takes to, to get to that kind of a status of run DMC, um, it takes those elements. So when you joined the group in the 80s and 90s, if I could recall, I mean, you were as much a part of the group as they were, right? I mean, at, at first when they started to rap, when the group, when the girls first started to rap, you weren't rapping, but then later on you did start to rap and write, correct? I rapped, I produced, I danced, I interviewed, I, I f took pictures. I did all the things that it would take to build um, the brand right there with them. And so at what point did it go from you're a part of the group to, you don't, you no longer need to show up. I mean, when did that change happen? And what, how did it happen? Herbie was the creator and, and he was the one who brought this together. And he was the one that brought me in with the, with the original in, intention. Um, and I don't think salt and pepper adopted Herbie's uh, uh, intention. I think they, once Herbie left the picture, um, they began to, to feel that, okay, this is, it is what it is. And now, you know, this it's almost like, um, they inherited, I mean, this is just my speculation. They inherited Herbie's situation because at, at some point Herbie was in and then Herbie was out and, you know, he's the creator. When did it like when Herbie was out? Did was there a meeting where they said, "Look, we don't want to go in this direction anymore. We're going a different no. direction." No, they did. I, I've had a couple of um, conversations where Salt had said, "You know, you're just uh, you're just the DJ." But here's my confusion, and I can see where everybody else is confused. If I'm just the DJ, why am I building this brand? Why am I working? Like you are, if I'm just a DJ, I'm on the stage just DJing. There was a whole lot more work other than just DJing and building this brand. You don't just come out the studio, have a record, and it becomes a hit. It's a building. You have to build. It's a process that um, builds that hit. And we've had quite a few. So um, I think her intentions and her actions... Um, was two different things. Their intentions and their actions was were two different things. And I was living under the the premise of what I was originally told when I was brought in. Um I lived up to that. And if the other problem is a contract. No, there was never a contract. Um between you and them? Yeah. There was never a contract. And when I wised up and wanted a contract, um, that was that was a threat. They felt that was a threat to them somehow, especially um, if I opened my mouth about, you know, divvying this up right. I didn't I wanted it to be a third for sure. But if it wasn't going to be a third, we need to justify my my. Um, the amount of time that you're investing in it. Yes. My investment, my equity. And for years, I had been wanting to um, define my role, but bringing it up would just be, it was a headache for them. But why and, was, it, and, was it was it a headache because they didn't, they were selfish and didn't want to share? Was it a headache because they felt like you were out of place for even thinking you deserved it? Where, where was it a headache? Yeah, my, from what I'm gathering, they think I'm out of place for asking for anything that I deserve, but they don't, they're not looking back. I don't think they're seeing, I, I, I know you, I don't know if you guys have seen the clip that's been going around. There's a lot of clips that, that are coming out, um, that we, we actually discussed that. Like 
you haven't seen the work that I've done, how could you not see it? How could you not see the songs that I'm on? People think that I'm on What a Man. I am on 15 songs. 15 songs. Three of them our hits. Mm -hmm. I've produced minimally, but I have produced, I have written minimally, but it's for, I mean, on our most successful album. Very necessary. So I can't see how they don't see that. But there is a lot of confusion that I had. And I would ask those questions. And when I would ask, as people know, of diehard fans that have been around and have seen those old shows, like the old Salt and Pepper show, I asked then. And that was just and that, that was just met with resistance. No. It was met with the fact of what you said. They just did not see the worth of doing that. How do you not see the the worth? Because they don't even see me like they don't see me as the as a, a relevant, important, integral part of this brand, and that's crazy to me. But the part that's crazy for me is how don't they see it when the fans do? I mean, Wendy Wendy Williams just recently talked about it on her show, and she said. For me, if, if, if it's not the three, it doesn't make sense. So how is it that they were unable to see what everybody in the culture saw? If you can, if you can get that answer out of them, please do. This day that has come, I, I really, you know what? That's not something I wanted to happen. I was all in. I never wanted this to go down this way, but I knew it would because how you going, how you going to use me <laughs> and not pay me? The other thing is, she, they, they basically said I was an employee and a DJ for hire, but they never paid me for none of those appearances and none of those photo sessions and none of those um, 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 appearances on those albums and, and studio times and, and countless hours of interviews and building this brand. There's, employees got paid. Was I your little slave girl? Like this, this is really intense because I grew up and I figured it out. And when I started to mention it, there was a, it was a threat to them. You see how they're, they're reacting right now. When did it start to dawn on you that you were being used? Oh my God. Um, I would say the nineties. Um, there was a complaint, uh, that was documented on the behind the music, um, that was done in the late nineties. Um, and I, I, I exposed that because I just couldn't put my finger on what it was. And, and imagine being kept out of the board room or, or being kept away from negotiations that have to do with you. And you have to figure those things out. Mm -hmm. um, I felt that back then, but I kept going because I wanted to, I needed to be 100% concrete on what was going like what was happening, how, how they were handling the business and also how my, how I was involved and how they saw me and how they were going to do it. But it wasn't until I would say this last, um, run with them, which was, uh, 2013, 2014 on, um, we had come back together again and I knew there was something there, but I, I just bypassed it because I'm like, look, this is the vehicle that we, we built together and there's opportunity for us to figure it out and maybe we'll figure it out along the way. I'm not going to trip. I'm going to get back in and we're going to figure it out. And I was telling Peppa that I was like, when can we talk about this? It was always a threat. And it, I got to a point, thankfully that I was completely just, if they're not going to talk to me, then this is definitely going to be a wrap. Like we're, I, we have to talk. So you saw me on that show, ask them in front of the cameras, can we please have a mediator? Can we please sort this out? Can we please figure out how to dissect this properly? That's beneficial for all of us and the fans. Their response was no, we're not sitting down with a mediator. We don't need to, um, rehash anything because this is what it is. It's what it's going to be. They said that. And that's when I, that's when you saw me get up and walk away.
I walked away. I didn't quit. I walked away from that conversation broken and again, and let down and not sure what was going to come of it. But knowing that we still had a lot of equity here, um, and it was important to nurture it for me. I, I just needed to have that sit down and they refused it. Were the fans ever thought about during this whole process from them? I can't speak for them, but it doesn't look like it. It looks like they, for an example of that is when we did part ways, when they did terminate me, I should say, I waited for them to make a statement and they hadn't, they wouldn't. I felt it was owed to the fans to know that, to know the truth so that, you know, they can know. What they did do was continue on using the the images of me after the termination to sell tickets. <laughs> so there was no, that, that was the reason for me to go forth with a, filing a, a lawsuit because it not only was it unfair to me, but it was unfair to the public. Um, and I just think that was un, unnecessary. I felt like it, it should have been, um, the fans were asking me what, what was happening. I put, I put the statements out. They well, didn't. I mean, I, so let's, talk, let's talk about the lawsuit. So August, 2019, you filed the lawsuit. This was around the time where, um, uh, this was from the removal of the new kids on the block tour, right? So when you filed the lawsuit, was it was because they hadn't paid you for money that they owed you? Yeah. Um, monies from from prior uh, a prior project. Um, I can't really disclose a lot about this because it is um, it's you know meant to be confidential, but I had every right to to um, file that claim. And in the end, it was a settlement. Mm. And so part of that settlement, you can't talk about it, right? No. But were you were you sad in the fact that you had invested your whole life into something that you then had to go and fight for? Like you had to fight, you had to fight for being paid what you felt was just due, given that you had invested so much of your life in it. Yeah. Yeah. It was a fight. It was an unnecessary fight. Let me just say this. I, I had, I had love for my, my, my group. I had love for them. I had love for the legacy. And there was a purpose when it, when, when the seed was planted, when they brought me in, there was a seed planted in me. And I saw to it that this was, would be nurtured. And I did my part. I did my part. They refused to acknowledge that. That's crazy to me. Do you think they were jealous? I don't know. I don't know. I ask myself, I don't know. I can't speculate what they, what, you guys can tell me. What do y'all think? Because I cannot but, tell I mean, you. I mean, I, you, talked, you talked to them. So I don't, I mean, you before, I mean, I don't know if you all talked that, but you talked to them. What, what would they say? I mean, I just, I'm, I'm, I'm just so confused. And it sounds like you're confused too. Babe, there was nothing that warranted anything, um, of that turnout, nothing, no action, no activity that I have done would warrant any of that vicious activity. I cannot believe it. I get that they feel that I am just a DJ. But not only is that an insult, what's wrong with a freaking DJ? <laughs> what's wrong with being a DJ? The, the DJ is, is who got you in the door. That was a DJ that played your music that got you in the door. But besides that, I don't know. You're asking me something I don't know. And a DJ in that era was, like you said, Jam Master J, that was an integral part of the group. And That's what I remember. in my mind I saw as a group. When Herbie said, my intention is to recreate a female version of Run DMC, I didn't say just run and D. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't get him saying just run and D. I immediately thought run D 
and J, which is a triangle. It's a triangle, you know, triangle, whatever. If I was just a DJ, I would just be DJing. I would not be on your album cover. I would not be in the studio with you. I would not be in the, um, on those promo tours. I wouldn't have to do all of that. I thought it was a, a, um, a, I was the opportunity. I loved it. I was like, yeah, let's do it. They gave me the schedule. They handed me the schedule. So there was me thinking and, and with the talks that we've had along the years, like, you know, the payday is coming this, you know, we're, we're going to, we're going to like one day we'll do a movie. We, we actually talked about how that would go. Like the two of them being born, the three of us, and then me coming in and, um, I mean, it was just an idea or whatever back then, but I, I'll, I, I really don't know when I, when I tell you, I don't know, I don't know, but what I do know is their reaction and their, um, the results and whether you considered me an employee, if you did that, you would have paid me as such. You would have paid me as an employee for all those hours. You didn't do that. Um, if you considered me a work for hire or whatever, I, we can't say that that happened because I didn't get paid for those activities to build this brand. It's a lot of years that have went by. And in the interim, I would ask for, for this to be defined. And it was like poking the bear. Are you, are you bitter at all? I mean, how do you not be upset or angry? Cause I've never known you to be an angry person or bitter person, but why not? You're not bitter or angry. I, I, I was very upset. This played out in different ways for me as, um, I mean, I've, I definitely had depressions about it. Bouts. I've had um, self-esteem issues. I had confidence issues. Um, on this show that I did uh, on OWN last love year. Love goals. Love goals. I shared with the um, therapist Spirit. If you saw that, you saw me having my voice issues. Like I couldn't even speak. It was just... Um, was it because it was chipping away at your confidence and your relate like it was trickling now over into your relationship? It was trickling into my relationship and thankfully I had, you know, a great supporting partner and you know, he knew. He knew it was just hard. It was co communication issues. It was it was a lot. Let me tell you what it does to you. It makes you feel less than a person. It makes you feel inferior. You have an inferior complex. You have you 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 have confidence issues. You have low self esteem. Never believing that I, I was good enough. Never like always having to um, prove, overprove, and never getting that that acknowledgement. So yeah, um, those things is those are the effects of that that behavior from. There's no encouragement. When there's no encouragement, how do you expect the seed to grow? How do you how do you plant a seed back in 87 and then not water it? So hmm. going going back to the girls, who's driving it? Somebody has to be driving it. Peppa, Salt, is it somebody behind the scenes, behind the group, attorneys, agents? Like who do you think is driving this? Because what I, th what I find interesting is uh, there was a period of time when you first started with the group where you were in the background with the music, doing the DJ, and, and you, even though you were in the, all the visuals and all that, and then you came much further in the forefront, performing, writing, uh, uh, rapping. And I, I personally think that's because you were the fan favorite. I mean, uh, fans were in love. I remember the era. Fans were in love with Spinderella. I never thought of Salt and Pepper without thinking of you. So who has, who's behind it driving this? Well, who does it look like behind it driving it? Well, in the recent interviews, Salt seems a little salty. And Peppa just wants to talk about Peppa. So I, it seems like it's Salt. Hmm. They have their name as the bosses. They have said, I am the boss. I make the deals. I sign the checks. It's, if you saw the show... They made it clear who is the boss. So who makes decisions? It's the two of them. And honestly, you guys, all you got to do is just look. 
you can you can see it. It's really not that deep. Where are you at with it now? I mean, now that they have this lifetime dog, which is part of what your your goal was as a group, play out without you. How, where are you at? With I'm, actually, I'm 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 good. I I like not being in an abusive relationship. I like being confident. I like being um, encouraged. I I surround myself with people that encourage me and bring me up. I have I have you know countless people that support and love me and do not discourage me. And and that's what we should be doing. I really, really, really in my heart cannot tell you how sorry to you guys, you know, that I am, I, I, I want it more from us. And trust me, I'm getting the short, I'm getting the short end of the stick. This is not about money. This is not about clout or um, um, this is not a publicity stunt. Isn't it legacy? Isn't it? My legacy is my baby. Isn't it what the three of you represented to hip hop, to the culture, to young women, to women in music, to women in general? Isn't that what it's about? Yeah, that's what it's about. That's that's what it's about for me. Hmm. So the, the there be the, the Salt and Peppers being honored at the 2021 Grammys. How does that how does that happen and not include you when lifetime achievement for the Recording Academy uh, includes music that you recorded with them? This is why I have stepped up, and this is why I'm speaking out because we don't have to be together. We don't have to be together. We have made the decision mutually. They fired me, but it's cool. I'm good with that. Fire me because I don't like being abused, but we don't have to be together, but we definitely should acknowledge the work that was put in. And that is on my back. The three of us did that. The three of us had that schedule. Nope. They keep bringing up 87 and what happened before me, before I got there. I can't tell you what happened before me. I don't know. The album that was done before me, and there was another album that I did come in on, but I was being groomed. But that third album has my DNA in it, that fourth album, that fifth album, and anything after that. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't mind doing it because I I saw the, the bottom line, you know? But yeah, the consumer, you can't, you can't disguise a, a, a truth. You're going to tell the people that I wasn't there when I was. This is why the, the, the viral um, attention is happening because people's memories are being fucked with. Mm-hmm. History is being written right now and you're okay with rewriting it to satisfy whatever your, your ego tells you that I did to hurt you. I don't know what that is. There was no issue that should warrant that behavior. Do you believe that you deserve a Grammy or to be recognized at the Grammys? Oh, yeah. yeah. What I would like to see happen is regardless of what all is happening, um, we're going to always have this issue because my name, my, my likeness is attached to their success. And unless we come up with a plan to figure that out, which that's a settlement, a settlement was done for the majority of that, but there's still things like, um, these lifetime achievement awards, um, that I should be a part of and that I will continue to to. The the star on Hollywood. Oh yeah. Um, I will do my best to pursue that which is do me. That's it. Mm. But anyway, um, I wish I could answer these questions for everybody. I just, I'm, I'm as broken about it and disappointed about it, but I have been dealing with this. So I, I know how this goes with them. It would be a shock to me for them to act differently. So are these the people that you knew back in the 80s? 
I mean, or 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 have they just become new people, different people over time? I mean, we've had a lot of great times, but they've had this underlying issue and really acted out on it in these past couple of years from this, um, the fact that I would ask about um, fixing or, or defining, I even just wanted my name to be, you know what I'm saying? People kept seeing three people and calling and calling us salt and pepper. And they would be like, who's that? They weren't, it wasn't fair to the new fans that they didn't know who this person was. Mm-hmm. So I made it clear that I wanted to define that with them and I wanted their support on that. And it was like, how do we do that? Why, why are we going to change our name? We, we, we're salt and pepper. I didn't ask you to change your name. I'm just saying like, how, how do you, how do you fix that? How do you, how can we justify that? Let's talk about it. And I wanted to sit down with what I called my sisters. And I wanted to sit down with these women who, who consider themselves bosses that would continue to allow me to be, um, that would continue to just make me feel like I'm nothing. You know, Hmm. I want, I was giving them the opportunity to fix it on various occasions and to define it. And they didn't see fit to do that. So, um, that's not, that's not what I'm tolerating in my life right now. You recently put out a statement when the documentary came out, um, to the fans to let them know why you weren't there and that you were still honoring the women who were acting in the film. And it it was a really positively written um, comment or statement for the public. Weren't you a little, didn't you feel it was insult on injury when they didn't even notify the fans that you weren't going to be a part of it? Like they just, they still expected your fans to show up and support it as well and hope that nobody knew. Um, that's why I put the statement out because I needed to be connected to our fans that wasn't sure of what was going on. I was getting tagged. I can't wait to see the bio- biopic. I can't wait to, um, I mean, they tagged me in everything anyway. So I know what's going on and I'm sure they get tagged. You know, fans may not know and it's, it has to be clarified through us and me putting out that statement showed exactly how I felt. I felt like the to produce a movie or story that regards the okay, so they tell me they they tell me that the movie was about their friendship. And I get that because they did have a friendship there. Um but why not how are you using the brand that I'm a part of? And why not, hey why not bring Spinderella in and 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 shed some light on Spinderella so that our fans as a as a whole would be satisfied? Why are you dissecting the fans? Why are you dissecting that? What that's a question for them. Mm-hmm. Without all the riddles and the roundabouts, because Spin was here, she was the second DJ, they said that. And what does that have to do with anything right now? What about the work that was put in? Right. So I want you guys to know that my life is not surrounded by salt and pepper. I need you to understand that I have a career outside of salt and pepper that takes care of me. And that has been taking care of me because I, I was smart enough to know that this though I was considering this a priority for me, I knew better. So I built my brand as in Spinderella and I work from that brand and haven't stopped. Even when salt and pepper stopped, I was building. So I have to ask you a question. One thing I always wanted to know, and I've never asked you this uh, privately. There was the video where it was the three of you and Tretch was in there with Peppa. You had a man and Mm -hmm. salt had, Tupac, right? Was that was Tupac? Yes. Why did we not see Tupac's face in that video? Oh, there was a, I think it had to do, they were trying to, oh, I think they would think they were thinking that Tupac's um, image was a little too rough for salt and pepper. Yeah. <laughs> and so they just didn't show, they just decided not to show him. Yeah. 
they they were and he was he was furious about that because them not showing him was to was in salt and pepper's um was supposedly benefiting salt and pepper's image that's the take that i got that's the take that i got um which is crazy because Pac was like you know he he stood for something he stood for something and and he spoke you know i mean he was prophetic he was he was a, a just a standard that people like you know adhered to in hip hop like he was like a bible and mm. they you know I don't know. They wanted the squeaky clean image for Salt and Pepper and Chow. Why? Why did they use him <laughs> in the bathtub or wherever he was? Why did they use him in the video? Why did they even have him in there? Right, and they showed his tattoo. You saw his tattoo. And if that's the case, why well, was Tretch in it? Because Tretch wasn't the most perfect person either. To, but, you know, I don't know. Like, I love my brothers. <laughs> Tretch was out there with other people's, you know, P. OPP, we remember. But wait. Yeah, right, right. I mean, so, if you, let's not. So, so what did Tupac say about being excluded? I mean, do you know anything? I mean, how did you know he was upset? I, I know his reaction was... He wasn't happy about that. I know he had it had gotten back to us that he wasn't very happy about it, um, because he wanted he wanted that. Um, I mean, he did the work. He wanted to be uh, seen, and he should have. Hmm. So it's, it's it, it sounds like you and Tupac have a lot in common. Hmm. Oh, hmm. I never thought about that. <laughs> I never thought about that. I mean, it just sounds but, like history repeating itself, right? I mean, you did the work that showed up, you know. People- honey, I tell you this: it's when you hide things, it comes to light. When you try to hide things, have faith; it comes to light, and you just have to, you know, hold your head. Because I had, I've been praying about this. I've been. I've been like, is this how it's supposed to be? Because I know I'm a good person. I know I didn't do one thing to them girls. I don't know what the hell I, I would do, but but just be. But it's not impossible that someone is, is irked by you just being, right? Mm-hmm. They just aggravated because you walk in the room. They just aggravated because you could shine regardless, even though you in the background, you still shine somehow. And I never wanted that. I... But I'm going to continue to be. Don't dim your light for somebody else. But the crazy part is their light, their light will always be eclipsed by this, this stain that they're leaving on history by doing this to you and now learning that this also happened to Tupac, uh, which is crazy because uh, for me, it just almost shows a pattern, right? That we're going to just use people as long as it benefits us. And then whenever it no longer either benefits us or somehow overshadows us, we will just erase it. Right. And then when you speak on it or when you protest, you're the bad person. When you protest for the, for the betterment of a situation and you are shut down or you're shunned or you're blacklisted or you're, basically belittled and devalued and discredited. It just goes to show that you should go harder. Mm. It just goes to show that you should go harder. So you have a daughter um, who you raise, you raise as a single mother. Um, When you look at her and you look at how you're standing up for yourself, what do you hope that she and other young women are getting from this uh, example? Stand up. Number one, um, get your get your work your I guess your paperwork in order. Be with a team or be have a team that that you support um, that support you. And what, the reason why I said that you support because the team that is holding you up needs support too. And that was me. I'm a team member. I'm not salt or pepper. I'm not in the front. I'm in the background. I'm rocking. I'm moving with them. But I didn't get no support from them. 
apparently I wasn't even um, worth it. So, hey, I really wish that young women learn to value themselves because perhaps I didn't value myself enough. Maybe I should have said, screw this legacy. Maybe I should have said, screw everything and walk away. However, I didn't. And we, we got to the places that we got. We reached a success level that we worked for. Um, but is it worth it? For me, I say, yes, it's worth it because we will go down in history. Um, even though it's overshadowed, it'll be overshadowed. I just feel like down the line, the music still speaks for itself. There's still a message there. And I was listening to that, that music while I was performing it. I was listening to the words while we were performing it. I was listening to expression, grasping the ability to express myself. All these songs and messages that we had, even in our shows, it just, I was trying to make that connection. I said, regardless of what's happening with them and our relationship, I know that the, I believe in it. I believe in these words and that's what I'm gonna get from it. That's what I'm gonna take with me. So what was the journey to rediscovering your self-worth when you felt like they made you lose it? To get to a point of peace, you have to go through some some hell and some tornadoes and some and some all kinds of like roller coaster rides to get there because you have to learn. I do feel that I have a um more of a balance. I am more outspoken. I am getting um uh, therapy for me. I feel like decisions that I've made, why would I make those decisions? Why would I be interacting with folk of that nature? Why did I just let those things pass? But think about relations that you've been in that you allowed things. And then you go, well, I allowed it, but what was my purpose? What, like, I just, I just wanted more for us. I wanted this to be um, I wanted to be justified, you know, I wanted it to be more for us, but justly. Um, and that I don't regret. I don't regret my loyalty. Cause that's, that's, a uh, that's, you know, something that most, you know, a lot of people don't have that level of loyalty, but look what's coming out of it for me. I, I'm cool. I've, I've, I've gone through that. I have come out better. I am, I am of service to women still. I am, I'm uplifting women. I, in everything that I do and the jobs that I take in the, uh, you know, just a level of, of love that I have for us, regardless of that, that happening, um, that I'm going to keep going with that because it was, it was a, a seed planted in me and I abided by it. Would you ever go back? No, hmm. I will never go back there. If salt and pepper is watching, which I'm sure they will. I mean, salt just followed me in clubhouse. I didn't follow her back, but I'm sure she's going to be paying attention. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're going to do a clubhouse uh, after show chat the night this airs. If, if they're watching, what would you say to them? I would say you owe me an apology and you owe the world, your fans, an apology. This is ridiculous. I would say you're, this is ridiculous. And I thought I really am disappointed and thought that you guys really upholded this legacy in its authentic form and would respect it enough to understand why people are so hurt. The fact that you are trying to take away something that people adore by erasing something integral is something that you got to really take a look at yourself. You really have to, I, I get that you have your intention was to be one thing, but this is way different. This has turned out way different than what you intended. And your hand is on this. Your hand is in this. 
We have come together and we have made a legacy. We all contributed to it. I am grateful that you guys opened that door for me. But for you to take liberty and make people believe that I wasn't there when I was is hurtful. And I think you need to search yourself for that. And if you want to sit down and talk about it with a mediator and a psychologist, we can do that. Well, I'll offer to mediate. I'm not a psychologist, but you know, I, I can I can get in between some shit, Spin. I just, you know, the crazy I'm part about <laughs> the crazy part I think about I'm more along, along the lines of Ayanla or somebody. <laughs> I think it's along those lines. I'm gonna just let I, you know what. I really I think we need to put our differences because we don't agree on this and we won't. Hmm. We need to get past that because there is a legacy and the legacy is our child. And if we work together to nurture that, guess who wins? You win, I win, and the people win. But you have to respect me in doing that. If you don't respect me, then it won't be done. And you would have shot your own legacy in the foot. You would have killed your own brand unnecessarily. Hmm. So I guess the last thing, uh, by the way, I do have Ianla's phone number and I will be texting her in the morning because I, I would love to see this happen. I will tell you. You're one of the few people that I know, and I mean this, uh, who's never in drama, who does not like the headlines uh, like this, who I never would have saw being caught. I mean, as a fa speaking as a fan from, you know, when I first learned of Salt and Pepper, you know, and Spinderella to now, I would have never expected you to be here. I mean, you, you guys are just such important. I didn't want to, but you know, this is something I've been dealing with for a long time. And you, even when we were, we were hanging out, I've been dealing with this, but it's to no, me. I always you didn't, you didn't tell me you didn't even tell me that was, you were going through all that. Cause I'm a good, I'm a good hearted person. And I wanted us to get past those. I never wanted to be this. I, I always saw something more positive for us. I always saw us growing up and figuring it out. And so I, I kept coming back. I wanted to sit down and, and define it. I asked them, but they weren't, they weren't with it. And this was the, the last straw for me. That was the, the, their actions are so disrespectful that I just don't know what to say like to that. I'm so glad that I've gotten past it though. So let me let's leave with this if, to all the Salt and Pepper fans, more specifically the Salt, the Spinderella fans who are watching, um, who have not heard from you directly uh, until now. What would you say to them? Uh, stand up for yourself. Speak out. I had to do it. I'm sorry that this happened the way that it did, but I'm not sorry for why I had to speak out. I feel like it was important and I, and, and it's a healthy, it's a healthy conversation to start with, to mend, but it takes both parties to do that. I just feel like, you know, we, in order to move past this, I'm going to keep, you know, honoring my, the original concept. I'm going to keep honoring the messages that we put out in our music. Please don't stop buying the music because, you know, even beyond us, it means something. Um, and there's going to be more to come from me. Hmm. <laughs> well, I can't wait to watch and see what that is. Uh, Sven, you know, I love you. I appreciate you. You, you show me love before Hollywood a lot, which lets me know that this relationship we have is real. So I appreciate mm -hmm. you. And I'm glad that you're um, sticking up for yourself because, you know, I think that that people do prey on people who are nice people. And you've always been known, at least to me and many other people that know you, to be a caring, loving person and 
always filled with joy. So I, I just want to see you given the respect due. Uh, I don't see, I'm a member of the Recording Academy. I don't see you not being honored with a Lifetime Achievement Award, knowing that you've dedicated your life to this group. And the star in Hollywood, to me, would just not mean anything if you weren't a part of that. So I hope that you're given the respect that you deserve. More importantly, the respect that you worked hard for. And, you know, I always love you. We always got you back over here. I appreciate you. Thanks for this platform. And I'm so proud of you, Jason. This is not meant to trash. I just want to let everybody know this is not a, a, a the intention is not to trash anybody, but it is to speak my truth. And if that is what I have to do, that's what I'm going to continue to do. Um, to call out that that which is not true and to put in the light the facts. That's the goal for me. And I'm going to continue to do that. And thank you, Jason. Anytime. And so we'll be on Clubhouse talking about this after the show. So if you're watching, go to Clubhouse. Bye, Spence. Bye, babe. Bye, y'all.